Eggman. Okay. Now we're going to start this 10 minute segment off with you. Okay. okay. And then you take about three or four minutes and then you will take about three or four minutes and then we'll give you an opportunity and probably have about a minute uh, with peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker and Miss Ashley Burns and the topic is meeting the needs of neglected and abused children. And Pastor Walker, let's talk about uh, over the last uh, 10 minutes that we have, some of the things that you think that our audience ought to know in terms of how we might be able to greater deal with some of the children that are neglected or abused. And Ms. Uh, Burns will sort of tie into what you're talking about and mm -hmm. she'll take about three or four minutes and then we'll yeah. go back and, and eventually end the show for today. Well, you know, Dr. Henry, I think one of the things I think adults need to open, we, as adults, we need to open our eyes and pay more close attention to, uh, to youth. Not only our own children, but children in general. Because children are experiencing, you know, in this day and age, peer pressure that these children are facing in this day and age, man, it's just unbelievable. And, and, and they are displaying certain behaviors and, and character defects and faults and stuff like that. And instead of criticizing and talking about, and that's a bad little boy right there, that's a mean little girl and that kind of stuff like that, you know, I think we should be trying to find a way to, to, to ask ourselves, you know, that's got to be a reason. There's that, that, that's something at the core there that's causing this child to maybe act this way or behave this way. And, and as the topic suggests, we're talking about meeting the needs because if a child is, to, in my opinion, if a child is acting out in a, in, in a way that's really just, you know, off the track. Outrageous yeah, in a real sense. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, that's got to be something there. In a lot of, in a lot of cases, you know, there, there's some neglect. There's a, there's a lack of love maybe that's being shared with that child, you know, and that child is, is, is rebelling that, against the fact that they're not being loved and cared for and, and nourished the way that my Bible tells us that we should do. You should nour nourish a child. And, and I'd be the first to say that I wasn't the greatest parent, you know, uh, around because at that time I was caught up in my own active drug addiction when I was young and I was wild and stuff like that. When I, my boys and stuff were born and stuff. So, you know, but I, I grew, I, I, have, I had a desire to, to be a good parent, you know, and, and I grew into it, you know what I'm saying? Most people do. Yeah, uh -huh. but you know, you got folks out here that, that, that think they know what they're doing and to suggest to them, you know, like, why don't you do a parenting class or something like that? And that's like, oh, parenting class, you know, I got this, you know, you do a parenting class. Yeah, you know? Anybody yeah. can be a parent. Yeah. Is that what we're, and, and I would imagine you run across that kind of uh, inf I mean, that kind of attitude quite often in what you do, Ms. Burns. Right, and it's, it's approach, I think, is important because how do we break those barriers? Because a lot of these families, you know, and just like ourselves, we all have a history, you know, with uh, how do we, they've been, a lot of them have been abused and neglected or in uh, drug addiction and, never, um, and, and some of them are still active. So how can we break those barriers? And I think uh, Pastor Walker said one of the keys is, um, is love because a kid and, and everybody needs love. love. Mm -hmm. And how do you access that to, um, because that, as children they have to have that in order to, to survive. They have to, and I, I, when I do home studies, I'd have grandparents, you know, they'd be very concerned and, um, you know, I would say freaking out about, you know, their well-being of their child. And I'm like, look, there's plenty of kids. I worked in uh, DCS in foster care for a year. I was like, look, they, there's plenty of kids out there who have nobody. I said, but they have you. And that's very important because that is what's going to make the difference. With love, things will make a difference. And that's important. And then the challenge that that I have, and I think uh, workers that have that care about um, people and and that are trying really hard not to be jaded, is how do you get somebody to really know that you mm -hmm. care about them and you're not just you're not being judgmental, mm -hmm. but you're actually doing that because you you do care. Mm -hmm. So how do you show that? And and in reality, it's 
to just be natural with it, to be you know, concerned that I'm here if you choose it. But unfortunately, we do have to deal with people's will. Mm -hmm. But we do our best and we definitely um, continue to do what we can. Um, and prayer is a big part of that too, mm -hmm. of um, being focused mm -hmm. of what do I need to do? Because I could be focused all over the place, but what do I need to do to be mm -hmm. focused? Um, and it's, um, so it's important in, to tell them to be very real and be honest. Because the, and again, the court is not being um, punitive at all, but then in my mind, children do need those boundaries. And then a lot of them don't have the parents that need to show them the boundaries. So how do we do that as a community? I think that's what's very frustrating for me that um, because I have to be so candid with some of the kids of like, if I see your name in obituary somewhere, I can say I tried, mm -hmm. but you gotta want to. Mm -hmm. And I and I, maybe some people would disagree with my approach, but I have to be real and honest. And also I, I have a conscience and I really do care about uh, families of saying if something did happen, because I've only had one so far, um, and I can honestly say when I went to the funeral mm -hmm. that I tried. Mm -hmm. And I think as society, we have to have that. Mm -hmm. And we have to sh um, break down the barriers of where we're not so jaded, mm -hmm. where we're still in this fight to mm -hmm. love one another. Mm -hmm. And not talking about no love of letting them do whatever they want. That's mm -hmm. not real love. Love is I'm gonna fight for you despite of all the resistance that you're showing. I always give my, my families that what comes to mind every time I talk to them is, you may go over me, you may go under me, but if I see you jumping off a cliff or jumping off the deep end, my hands are gonna fly, I'm gonna try, try, try until it's all said and done. And then if you go over me or under me, then that's your business. But at least I can say with my conscience, I've done it. I think that's the key to this work because it's a serious, it's important work. Mm -hmm. It's um, the very, uh, what makes society, you know, um, worth living, what makes life worth living. Mm -hmm. It's very important and I think a lot of us get jaded in this work and we have to continue to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I, I think one of the most important things, I think we've said this uh, on many occasions, Pastor, mm -hmm. and we talk about love and I yeah. think that uh, no matter what situation a child or an individual might be in, if you demonstrate to that individual, Absolutely. no matter who you are or who that child or who that person might be, that you have respect, understanding, goodwill toward them and that uh, you wish them the best. Absolutely. And I think that if you demonstrate that to an individual, no matter what situation that they might come from, I think that they're able to buy into some of the things. As a matter of fact, you have to demonstrate that before you can start teaching them anything. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing because with my, <clears throat> excuse me, with, that, with my grandchildren, you know, they're just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Granddaddy, what? I love you. You know, mm -hmm. Granny, I love you. You know, and mm -hmm. come and want to hug. Sometimes uh -huh. I'll be asleep. They'll come wake me up. When, I just want to <laughs> hug, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's because we're showing them that kind of love. And, you know, when you look at love, Love attracts, mm -hmm. and and you see young people being attracted to these gangs. Mm -hmm. this, these gangs are showing a strange kind the of love, love that's attracting mm -hmm. these young people to the gangs because they feel like they got a sense of, of camaraderie there and, and there's a sense of loyalty. Mm -hmm. and, and they're making them feel like, you know, you're wanted, you're needed, you, you belong, you know, you're loved. Mm -hmm. But it's a strange kind of love, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it, it's attracting them, mm -hmm. you know. But that love, there's a power mm -hmm. in, in this thing called love. Love it, is strange. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it it's a powerful thing, mm -hmm. you know. And if you, and if you walk in it consistently mm -hmm. and, and, and you, you fashion and form your life based upon mm -hmm. how can I meet an individual's need as opposed to what can I get from, from this that. individual. Mm -hmm. I think you have a better way, and especially like breaking that barrier down and when you're trying to reach these families to, to make them see that, you know, that there is a need for them to maybe get some training in terms of how to raise a child. If, if you approach them, again, you approach, if it's, a, if it's from a foundation of love, uh, people can sense it, people can, can mm -hmm. feel it, people can mm -hmm. identify with it, even the coldest heart, mm -hmm. you know, the power of love will love, penetrate it. It will. Yeah, it, it penetrates will. it. Ms. Well, Ms. Burns, uh, the final minute of this show. Also, I think it's good to talk about resiliency um, because even when you're dealing with the, what, what people would consider the meanest or the baddest, mm -hmm. there's still beauty 
within that person of what can we access, how can we access them to meet their full potential? And that's what I love about even the delinquent, what's considered the delinquent child, is how can we, act, because the more resistance, actually the more that greater they can be. Because if they could come out of the gangs, if they could come out and um, show that love, how many others can they reach? Very good. And of course, uh, Pastor and, and uh, Mr. Burns, let me uh, thank the two of you for being here with us uh, this morning. And let